What if God's judgment is just a human invention? What if believing in hell is just slavery to hateful religion? Second Peter introduces us to teachers who asked these questions. They reasoned that God doesn't seem to bring destruction on sinners when they sin, so why would we think he will destroy them in the end? And if there is no judgment, then there's no such thing as acting unrighteously. You are free to follow all your desires, for God is not your moral authority. But this is not what Peter taught his community. He taught them God is their moral authority. There is a coming judgment. They had been freed to live morally, therefore they should live lives of righteousness. They must call themselves and others out of sin and darkness to shed light on the truth that freely following your own desires and appetites is really just slavery to wickedness. But the teachers in Peter's church wanted none of this. They were secret heretics, denying the existence of any kind of godly judgment. They taught, follow your instincts. They taught that true freedom was in sexual fulfillment. So what are the righteous to do when God doesn't move against what these false teachers claim is true? Does that not prove that since God is not judging them, that he must approve? It is to this abuse that Peter would offer his reproof. But his prison cell seems to prove the opposite true. Peter followed the moral authority of Jesus through decades and pain, and yet the fate of he and the wicked were one. They were both in chains. As Peter counted down to his final days, surely people were asking, if he is righteous, why hasn't God saved? Yet as reports of Peter's church reached his prison gates, he was ready to defend God's coming judgment for which he had long been in wait. Peter replied that God has never changed. The God revealed in Jesus and the God written of in Old Testament days is one and the same. Ever since the ancient world of Noah, God made a distinction between the godly and the wicked. Noah preached righteousness, the news that God held moral authority, he freely shared. So God saved righteous Noah from the flood but the wicked world was not spared. Likewise, God made a distinction even in the wicked city of Sodom between Lot who protected his guests and the lusty men who sought them. Again and again throughout all scripture, God always holds this tension between the wicked he destroys and the righteous who receive his intervention between those who submit to his moral authority and those who remain in opposition. Therefore, since the testimony of God's word is consistent on this distinction, Peter says it cannot be human invention. But the teachers would argue, if that's what God's word says, then why doesn't he bring destruction on sinners when they sin? Doesn't that mean he will not destroy them? in the end? But Peter says the answer was given of all places on the Mount of Transfiguration. There, a young Peter saw Jesus's transformation into the majestic glory of the Lord. Jesus shone as God's heavenly word. He is the authoritative light showing our moral weakness. He is the lamp revealing our wickedness. And yet, Jesus holds out hope for the righteous, for all who come to Jesus, who accept his authority proven on that summit, are freed from their slavery and rescued from his judgment. The teachers in Peter's church claimed God was not coming to judge. They argued that if he was, God would have already come. But what they forgot 
was that God already came and God already judged in Jesus, his beloved son. Jesus, though righteous and free, gave himself over to destruction and hell. He was judged for our unrighteousness and our slavery. And since God did not spare his own son, he will surely bring judgment on all who do not find freedom under his moral authority. The good news of Jesus is neither human invention or even religion. For the reason that God doesn't bring destruction on sinners when they sin is not because he will not destroy, but because God does not want to destroy them in the end. The reason there's no judgment now is because God is being patient. It's not because destruction is the invention of a hateful religion, but because God wants even those who deny his authority to come to his light and be forgiven. God's judgment may seem late in coming, but that lateness is because he is patiently loving. So this is the rebuke that came with his letter's delivery. What the teachers claimed was freedom was actually slavery. What they called liberty to follow their desires was actually a rejection of God and his authority. And so, with the teachers' lies exposed, Peter invited all of those who wanted to know what it feels like to be cleansed of sin, what it feels like to be freed from destruction, to come into the light of Jesus's righteousness and to live a life free in his godliness. Peter taught them the real human invention is a God without judgment and a God without justice is the truly hateful religion. But for all who see that God's lateness is patience, that he is waiting so that we might come to repentance, we can boldly come into the light of Jesus, and we will not experience judgment, but will instead experience him as gracious. So, because of the promise made throughout God's word and in the transfiguration of Jesus, we know that God has the authority to judge the wicked and save the righteous. Therefore, may we live lives of righteousness now. For when Jesus returns, all wickedness will be gone, given over to destruction and hell and the godly will live forever with Jesus, where only righteousness dwells. Hey everyone, I'm David with Spoken Gospel. Thank you so much for watching our introduction to the book of 2 Peter. Spoken Gospel is a nonprofit ministry dedicated to speaking the gospel out of every corner of scripture. And we do that with free resources like this video you just watched. And all of our resources are available for free because of people like you who support us by giving monthly or one time, doing whatever they can to come around us. So if you wanna join in what we're doing uh, and become a, a donor or see all of our free resources, just head over to SpokenGospel.com.